Well, hey, Lakeview friends and family. In today's Midweek Medicine, I wanna make you aware of a, of a special day of prayer and fasting that we will be participating in as a church this Saturday, April 4th. It's being coordinated by the, the Gospel Coalition, and you can find their very helpful information and the content on their website at thegospelcoalition.org, all one word. It'll provide content for you personally, as well as for others to join with you in prayer, maybe via Skype or just folks in your household there. Listen, these same moments and circumstances of life that provide an opportunity for paralysis and fear, they're also moments where we discover the greatest empowerment to pray. There's something in those moments from our humanity that awakens anxiety, while at the very same moment, the Spirit of God is awakening our cries to God. Listen, I've experienced that uh, this week here in New Orleans and in our own church, where we're coming face to face with sickness and, and even life and death scenarios that, that we've heard of elsewhere, but, but now they're here. Uh, if you're on the prayer chain, you, you've been seeing these needs of our people and our family members in the hospital, in ICU, fighting for health and even fighting for their life. This has sent me back into my prayer closet seeking fresh empowerment to pray, not just to pray like a typical day, but to pray the way God wants me to be praying right now. So the Lord directed me to Isaiah chapter 37 to visit the prayer closet of a king in Judah named Hezekiah. One of the more famous things that Hezekiah ever did, maybe this is all some of us know him for, was to, to add 15 years to his life. Now, he didn't do that through discovering some rare berry that was growing on the back of the mountains. He did that through prayer. But, but before we get to that episode in his life, just before that, it was this prayer of intercession in Isaiah chapter 37 that caught my attention. Uh, here's what happened. The world was coming under the siege of the Assyrian Empire. The king there named King Sennacherib, he had quite a resume. It, it, was, it was a day of a different kind of pandemic that was sweeping over the world where the, the Assyrian Empire was conquering one country after another. So we pull up in Isaiah chapter 36, and here's where the story begins. It says, In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah, and he took them. And then the rest of chapter 36 is a long taunt by this king who is taunting Israel, taunting the king, taunting the God of the universe. And then in chapter 36, towards the end of that chapter, he finishes this taunt by saying, listen, nothing's been able to stop me. All right, chapter 36, verse 18 says, Beware, he warns the people, lest Hezekiah, your king, mislead you by saying, The Lord will deliver us. And he says, Has any of the gods of the nations delivered this land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim? Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who among all the gods of these lands have delivered their lands out of my hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? Right. So there is this moment in which this pandemic has swept across the world and nothing has been able to stop it. And now it's come to Hezekiah's doorstep and it's about to overrun the people of God who are in Jerusalem. So in Isaiah chapter 37, uh, this decree comes to Hezekiah, and this is what he does. In verse 14, it says this, Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed to the Lord. He said, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, enthroned above the cherubim, you are the God, you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. I love the way Hezekiah starts with God's resume, right? Pandemics, crisis moments, they have their own resume built into them. They come and they intimidate and they arouse fear in our hearts. But Hezekiah does the right thing here. He goes before God and he presents before God God's 
resume. And he calls on God to incline your ear. Remember, we learned that in the temple, they were taught that God was listening and inclining his ear to them. So he said, incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see and hear all the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to mock the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their lands and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they were destroyed. So now, O Lord, our God, save us from his hand, and that all the kingdom of the earth may know that you alone are the Lord. And again, I love the angles that are found in this man's prayer closet. These need to be our angles. We are fighting for something. We are fighting for protection from something. We are fighting and calling out to a God who has a particular resume, and we are after a particular outcome. We are after this outcome, that the whole earth may know that you alone are God. And then it says this, Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Because you have prayed to me, concerning Sennacherib, king of, Is uh, of Assyria. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning him. Because you have prayed to me. I love that phrase. God's about to act, but he stops before he acts, and God's got many reasons to act here. But he highlights to Hezekiah, because you have prayed. Because you've prayed, I'm going to act because you have prayed. Let that soak in. I think sometimes we feel like, do our prayers matter? Is there anything in the outcome of this? Isn't God just going to do what he's going to do anyway? Well, in this moment, God goes out of his way to communicate to Hezekiah, because you have prayed to me, I'm going to act. And, and here's the decree that God brings. He says, therefore, thus says the Lord, this is verse 33 of chapter 37, concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, or shoot an arrow there, or come before it with a shield, or cast up a siege mound against it. By the way that he came, by the same way he shall return, and he shall not come into this city, declares the Lord, for I will defend this city to save it, for my own sake, and for the sake of my servant, David. Listen, uh, clarifier here, I'm not Hezekiah, we're not Jerusalem. Our enemy is not Sennacherib. We don't get to apply their outcome to our crisis. That's, right. That's not how the Bible works. That's not how we understand to read the Bible and apply it. But this is a powerful and transferable lesson on prayer and crying out to God. I, I don't know how God might intervene, but neither did Hezekiah, right? He didn't know what God was going to do. He, he, he just knew to spread it before the Lord and make his case for God's glory in his hour and then see what God would do. Remember a couple of days ago I mentioned James chapter 5. Remember that, that passage says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. James said, he said that in the context of a local church praying for the sick among them. That's what they were doing. Uh, we've had, and, and more than likely, we're going to have a lot more sick among us. James specifically says, are there any sick among you? Well, yes, there are. Then he says, well, let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them. And the prayer of faith is going to do its work in their lives. Now, listen, these verses that we've just looked at, they don't guarantee a particular outcome in every circumstance. They don't say that every city will always be spared of what threatens it. They don't say that every sick person is going to be healed. But, but, they call on us to pray as though those outcomes are possible. When we turn to the Lord and cry out to Him, prayer, listen, prayer takes a unique courage. To wholeheartedly cry out to God for a particular intervention is a risky thing to do. It risks our faith. It risks our disappointment. It risks our possibly being confused that God did something different than what we hoped that he would do. Listen, that didn't stop Hezekiah's example. And that didn't dial back James' instruction to us. So, 
Don't be paralyzed by this moment. Be empowered by the Spirit to pray as though God truly does intervene in the affairs of His people. Remember, this Saturday is a special day of prayer and fasting. We're going to be joining with all kinds of believers all over the country and around the world to lift our cries to God. These efforts are being coordinated by the Gospel Coalition. Again, you can find some really helpful resources and materials for this on their website, thegospelcoalition.org. They've provided morning time, mid time, and evening content, some for personal time, some for praying with others. Listen, when I'm watching these heroic members of our healthcare community, and they're serving on the front lines to care for physical needs, and some of our church and our very family members are being cared for by them, let us. Stand in the gap on behalf of the spiritual needs of this hour and let our voices to God for His intervention in this crisis be heard. And let us do so as though God truly does intervene in our lives, because He does. Amen?